Hello again! I'm going to be doing a book and movie comparison today of The Zookeeper's Wife. I'm going to tell you right now, before I start, I'm going to get a little critical with my opinions, more critical than usual, so be prepared. The book The Zookeeper's Wife, A War Story, was written by Diane Ackerman and published in 2007. It tells the true story of Jan and Antonina Zabinski, who managed to hide 300 Jewish people in their Warsaw Zoo during World War II. I was looking forward to reading this book, not just because it's about World War II, and not just because I wanted to see the movie, but because someone I know read it and absolutely loved it. Unfortunately, I did not love it. I didn't think the book was very good. Not the story. The story itself of what the Zabinskis did is amazing. But I found the book disappointing. Ackerman clearly did a lot of research. The problem is, she apparently wanted to include every bit of information she uncovered, whether it was relevant or not. This makes the book feel unfocused, disorganized, and weighed down by unimportant details and tangents. Given that it's subtitled A War Story, I expected going into it that it might be written in the non-fiction novel style. Were it written that way, I think it would have had a clearer, more engaging narrative. Instead, it was more of a recital of facts and conjectures that occasionally focused on an individual, and that individual wasn't always the zookeeper's wife. Antonina just isn't in it as much as the title implies. It's as much about the zookeeper himself as it is about his wife. I didn't mind that. I liked Jan, and at times, his activities were more interesting to read about than hers. It just makes me wonder, why was it titled The Zookeeper's Wife? Let me be clear, I didn't hate the book. I learned a lot from it, it was very thorough, and if you take it as a collection of facts about Poland before, during, and after the war, with a special focus on various stories, including that of the Warsaw Zoo, it does a fairly good job. But still, Ackerman's tendency to abruptly change topics midstream was frustrating, and she often dropped the thread of tonal consistency when she described something serious in one paragraph, and then in the next paragraph tell a humorous anecdote about something silly one of the animals did. Immediately after finishing the book, I wrote that this was a tedious and disjointed reading experience, and I felt little to no emotional connection to the characters, which is something I shouldn't ever find myself saying about a Holocaust story. I still feel that way. I told you this was going to be a critical review. Let's move on to the movie. While I was reading, it was always easy for me to picture this story on film. Certain events naturally lend themselves to it, so as a movie, it works quite well. The movie stars Jessica Chastain as Antonina Zabinski, which is pronounced Zabinska in the film, so one of us is saying it wrong. Her performance is good, and I guess her accent is fine, though I do find the small, higher-pitched voice she chose to go with slightly distracting. Antonina became more of a central character in the movie, so the title actually fits. It gives her more to do and glosses over the difficult pregnancy which left her bedridden for months in real life. Her husband, played by Johann Heldenberg, also has several key scenes of his own, in addition to their scenes together. I liked him, as I did in the book, and I appreciated the focus on their relationship. I knew reading the book that there was no way the movie could possibly keep everyone and everything in it, so I had my guesses about who and what would make the cut, and for the most part, I agreed with the screenwriter's decisions. I was most glad that they kept in the story of Dr. Korshak, head of an orphanage who refuses to desert his children. In what I felt was the movie's most touching scene, he and the children are boarding the train out of the Warsaw Ghetto, which we know leads to the death camps. Jan Zabinski is present in the movie version of this scene, standing there helplessly watching as all these little children line up, and one by one they patiently raise their arms for him to lift them into the train car. The trusting look in their eyes, and the hopelessness of it all, is heartbreaking. When it first started out, the movie was fairly close to the book, and on a large scale, it remained faithful but it did have several significant deviations. 
By far, the biggest change revolved around Lutz Heck, zookeeper of the Berlin Zoo and Hitler's chief zoologist, who, in the book, comes to the Warsaw Zoo a few times, takes the animals that he wants, and never comes back again. The movie makes Heck, played by Daniel Brühl, a much more prominent character. His attraction to Antonina is far more developed, and making him decide to breed extinct animals right there at the Warsaw Zoo gives him a reason to be around, a near constant threat to both the hidden Jews and to Antonina's safety. It also makes the story's climax more dramatic. Normally, I would be very critical of such a drastic change, especially if I was familiar with the true story of the Zabinskis beforehand. It's a huge difference, and if it's not true, then it's a fabrication. But I can see why they did it, and I think it made the movie hold together better, which is something the book struggled with. I think this is a case where the movie told the story in a more cohesive and engaging way than the book did. Yes, there are big changes, embellishments, scenes and characters added, and that's not ideal when we're talking nonfiction. But still, I feel the movie was a more compelling depiction of what the Zabinskis and the Jews in the ghetto had to experience. I know there are different opinions out there. After all, the only person I know who read the book loved it. I don't know what she thought of the movie, but those were my reactions and feelings and I thought I'd share. Whether you agree, disagree, or have no opinion whatsoever, I appreciate your listening and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching! Bye!